All right, so you're young. You've been waiting for this day for years. You get your license, you've been saving up for down payment, you buy a truck. You love it, it's paid for, you find the love of your life, you cruise around with your, with your, with your girlfriend beside you on the bench seat. Life is good, you know, this is the one. This is the one I'm gonna get married to. You propose, she says yes, life is good. Then one day, she wakes up, she comes downstairs, she says, honey, I'm pregnant. And you're thinking, yes. And then she follows with, you need to sell your truck and we need to get a minivan. This video is brought to you in partnership with Lincoln Electric Canada. Together, we can show you how to make a utility trailer to do manly things behind your <coughs> minivan. So this is the frame that we're going to start off with from a pop-up tent trailer. Now, uh, these lose all value to their owners uh, after about 10 years when the tops start leaking. But they're not worthless to you and me because they have a nice little frame, they've got an axle, they've got a tongue, and they've got wiring and everything for the lights already. Now, we're going to start over, put new wiring for the lights, but um, we're going to make this our own little trailer. Now, these trailers go past the tires and we're gonna shorten it a little bit. We're gonna, we're gonna take it so it's four feet wide. It's gonna be seven feet long. The reason I'm shortening it is so that whoever uses it doesn't get too overconfident and end up start going to things like the quarry and putting two ton of stone on there. This is just a nice little utility trailer to bring your garbage to the dump or to uh, bring your lawnmower to your father-in-laws. So what we wanna do first is not take for granted that whoever built it loved their job and did everything perfect. So we'll start making sure that it's square. So we're a little 111 and a half. And holy cow, 111 and a half. So it's nice starting off with something square. You might not be so lucky, but we'll measure in. We've got 14 and 7 sixteenths. 14 and 7 sixteenths. All right, we can take a scribe because we live in Canada and it's rusty. We'll make a mark at 14 and 7 sixteenths, which is right there. If you don't have a chalk, you can grab the lumber that uh, we're gonna put a two by six deck on there. If you don't have a chalk, then uh, you can just use the lumber. Just make sure you grab one that doesn't have a big crown on it. 14 and 7 16. We're just going to grab a square and just make a line so our line is somewhat straight. We'll check it after we cut it. This is the weakest that the trailer is. Now you can cut the ends off of the, the pieces that you just cut off and use this end rail. Uh, we opted not to. We ended up going with a two inch by two inch by eighth inch. And we're gonna be welding that just slightly down so we can catch this entire axle here and then support the front and the back. 82 inches long. And we should be 47 and a quarter. Measure once, cut once. So we are 82 inches long. Right. Oh, I missed that smell. We're gonna be bolting two by six across, all the way across, pressure treated, and that'll be our main deck. Then we'll do the same thing, two inch uh, angle iron at the back, the stuff in the back and the front. So we're going four feet wide. These are two by six, so they're actually five and a half inches wide. So we're using four 14 foot two by sixes. Or should we just face it up just slightly? Then we'll be building our sides on there and we'll be building a ramp. We'll have some scrap two by six that we can stick underneath 
and that can use as our guide for where we want to weld our angle iron. All right, so we've got our two by six cut. Um, we've got to cut the size. I see we've got two and three quarter that we need in between. We'll probably use the full width of the two by four and then just cut three quarter inch off of one of the two by six. But I'm gonna use that on my table saw. If you have a scale saw, don't worry about it because if your line is a little crooked, that's what this two inch angle iron is for. It covers up all mistakes. So wood, once you cut the wood, it's gone. Metal, you can just keep adding metal because we have nice things like this MIG pack 140 MP, which we're gonna use to weld the rest of the trailer together. So the money that you save on building your own trailer more than covers the cost of the welder and it leaves it open for all the other projects you wanna do in the future. Now it's a nice little welder, but it's not gonna fix rusty steel or make good penetration on old steel, especially because this is an older trailer. So we're gonna scribe a line to wherever um, we're gonna be welding and then cleaning that off with our grinder so we have good penetration. The welder does 516 steel, this is eighth, but we still wanna get that heat into it. So clean, shiny steel is the way to go. We've got the angle iron nicely covering the full support on the axle and then we'll weld the channel back to it along with drilling quarter inch carriage bolts into the front and the back. We'll have a nice sturdy trailer that will easily support a, a nice core. We can use our scrap wood just to set our height. Um, we want it nice and tight and we can force that in afterwards. We'll have to tap it in but uh, we can set it back at the same time just to get our tack then we'll remove the wood and then we'll be able to weld it solid on the inside. It's like air conditioning for the shop. I need it. Now, if you're new at welding, you might want to flip the trailer upside down. It is easier to weld with gravity helping you. If you're a little more experienced, should be no issue to run a nice bead nicely along the frame here. We'll do the insides at the back. Give us lots of room there. Uh, basically, um, have some fun with the welder. You can't have too much welding. As your weld cools, it'll pull the steel one way. So if we weld everything on this side, it'll slightly lift up on it, and that's okay. That'll help us get our two by six back in again. And then when we stick our quarter inch bolt in there to bolt the two by six to our frame, we'll be able to pull that nicely right back tight again. So we got we have a tack in place. We can pull our we can pull our blocks out so we don't catch any fires. You can see it gets worn pretty quick, but we just use those for spacing. Now, I don't need to weld it completely solid. Basically what we're doing, this is already solid enough because it's seat channel. So we wanna carry the weight of that over to the front because the trailer is pretty flimsy in the front. So we wanna lift up on this a little bit, just catch this angle, weld it nice and solid on the front, and then we'll just stitch it on here and weld it solid at the back. That, along with our two by six bolted to the top, we'll have a nice sturdy trailer. All right, so we're gonna put our front lip on. Um, and I had it cut a little extra just in case. And I'm glad I did. Well, I said four feet, we're one inch short, which sucks. But we'll put it on. Um, I love these little thin blades, uh, little cheapies. They're about a, a buck a blade and a buck for every job that you do, but they're just so nice and thin that I'll cut the end off and then we'll cut this on a 45 because we really wanna impress those neighbors. And those are the little things that really show afterwards. Um, so you can cut both at the same time, and even if you're off, it doesn't matter because you cut both at the same time. Just watch. Look at that. It's like a professional made that. Let me grind this. I got a little weld here. Oh, look at that. So when you're using your grinder, make sure that wherever you're going to be grinding is nice and clean of all the rust and paint. That allows the welder to get good penetration. Every weld that you do, groove it out so there's a good angle. So basically a nice spot to lay the weld inside and that allows you to grab more of the surface area of the steel when you're welding. Much stronger weld. Okay, so I should have cleaned this better and this is what happens. You get porous and, and it gets popping and ugly. So really take the time to clean it. Um, I'm gonna grind this out and do that again because that's almost embarrassing. And that's okay, just clean it up and try again. Nobody's perfect. Okay, 
come off of it a little bit because I'm filling the gap. I'm trying, this is lower than this is. I'm trying to connect this little brace to this one just for the strength. I really wanted to puddle it like it wanted to come off there. You see it got much better penetration on the bottom half there. So we'll grind that off a little bit and try that again. Okay, so you might recognize this. This is actually the skid that uh, these workbenches came on, but they'll make a nice little railing all the way around the outside. Nice thinner steel. This is already galvanized. Um, we'll clean that off and weld it solid because it's just tacked, and then build a nice little railing around it. Then we'll paint it, then we'll install the wood, and then we'll get on to our gate. So here we go. So we're building our little guardrail around the outside. So our measurement was 82, but now we want to add the width of the railing. So we're going to go 82 and three quarter. And we'll just cut it there. So we want that times two, and then 47 plus inch and a half, 48 and a half. So I cut, I cut little legs, we'll weld those on. Uh, we'll do four on the outside and then we'll do three on the inside. Um, and it's nice to weld that all while it's laying this way. And then we'll flip it up and then we'll weld it um, onto the side. So we'll grind off a couple of these, just the little uh, leftovers from where the skid was welded together. It'll be so beautiful, so beautiful. It's like air conditioning in the shop. It's like fresh air on your face. This bar is actually uh, galvanized. So I marked it out every 20 inches. I'm gonna have four supports. So it's 82 inches long, 20, 40, 60, 80. When I'm trying to get a right angle, um, I lift up on this side slightly. I tilt it a little bit this way and have a tiny gap here. Then I weld, I put a little tack right there and you can see it uh, as I do that, um, it'll, it'll pull it this way. If for some reason I need to bend it farther, then I need to break this weld and to, to get it square. So now that I've got a, a little tack on that side, I can put a little tack on the inside and keep it square. So before you paint it, uh, just walk around, make sure that there's no sharp corners, that nobody's gonna cut themselves. These straight corners, let's just put a little angle on it. That just looks so much nicer. All right, about there. So the welding's done. We're gonna scuff it down outside, uh, just with a wire wheel and the grinder, just to uh, get the little bit of rust off. We'll splash some paint on it. I don't like painting, but I do like candy. So it's not so bad. You can put pour 15 on, you can, you can get carried away. We're just kind of making do for now. This will hold up if you wash the salt and that off. But uh, we're in Canada, so things rest. While the paint's drying, we'll weld the gate together for the back and then we'll throw the deck on it and we got ourselves a nice little trailer. Wow, that's beautiful. So at this point, after working on an old rotten camper trailer with used steel, if you're not filthy yet, you're, you're not trying hard enough. You gotta try harder. It's, you can remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. It's important as you're MIG welding to make sure that your cup stays clean, tack everything together, and then move your wand back and forth between the two metals to get good penetration. MIG doesn't penetrate as much as a stick welder does. All right, so there's a few things to consider when you're building your ramp. One is the height of your trailer. If you have a lawnmower, if you're building this to put a lawnmower in, you wanna make sure that your ramp is long enough to be able to not have the deck hang up when you're uh, loading your trailer. Um, another thing that people 
generally don't think about is if you see any trailer, you'll see a, a gate being four feet up and being locked into like a, a tab on the back. What we're gonna do is build ours so it folds completely into the trailer. When, when the trailer's empty, there's no point in having this giant thing catch wind at the back, especially with the fuel uh, the way it is. So we'll make it so it can fold all the way in um, if there's something in there, we'll make it so we can support it straight up and then we'll also make it so we can take it right out. Now, because we weren't a full 48 inches wide, I asked my steel supplier to shear me off a piece 47 by 48 inches, but there is a, um, an up and a down to this. If you run, run your hand over, it's really easy this way and it's harder this way, so there's a grip one way and they actually sheared it the wrong way. Um, I'm not too worried about it, uh, it is what it is, but we make these videos so you don't make the same mistake. So make sure that if you're not exactly square, that the way they shear it is that um, it's either going up or down and then you can flip it around accordingly. So for the perimeter, you can lay the perimeter on there uh, because your, your steel should be straight if, uh, if it was sheared. But we're going with inch and a quarter square tubing, eighth inch thick for the perimeter. And when you lay it down, you want to make sure that it's corner to corner, that it is 100% square. So we've got 86 and 3 16 This steel is strong, but we are going to take a uh, one inch square tubing by eight and just wherever our tires are going to end up, rather than stretching the steel and bowing it out, we're just going to weld two little supports up for um, where the quad would end up. So, all right. So while we're waiting for the ramp to cool so we can handle it, for our hinge system, we're gonna have a, a vertical piece of pipe here and then on our gate, we'll have two pieces of pipe on the outside with a bolt in between and then a, and then a T. This T will slide into this vertical one and will allow the, the ramp to kind of lift up and down, uh, making it over this corner when we lay it flat. Uh, the two pieces that we cut out of the corner here because it sticks out, we can weld that on the bottom here so we have a nice straight piece to weld our pipe to. These are some engine mount bolts from a GM truck. I just had them laying around. They're 10.9, so a little bit uh, harder than grade 5 bolts. And they fit nicely inside of this, this half inch black pipe for gas line. Uh, it's nice and thick. This should work just fine. Uh, you don't want it too tight because dirt and rust and everything's gonna um, end up in here and it's gonna get too tight. So a little bit of slop is absolutely fine. The bolt is roughly um, six inches long. Mark the center at three inches. And then from the outside, our gate's gonna lay inside. 11 and a half to the center. Seven and a half to the center. So we'll weld those to the top of our ramp just on the outside and that will keep our pipe in line. So we use one full piece because it keeps it perfectly in line but we want a bolt to be able to swivel in the middle here. So we're just gonna cut a center section out. Basically, the center of this bolt is where the threads start. We're gonna cut the end off and the head off and stick that in the middle and then weld our T right where the threads start. One in there. We'll have another piece of pipe on the bottom of this once we figure out uh, where that's gonna end up. We don't really wanna catch a lip if there's something low there. We come on a nice smooth transition, but then when we flip it over, that allows this bolt to kind of slide up and um, lay the gate inside the trailer. So basically, uh, you want to find your height. You're just putting the jack underneath there. So this is the, the kind of lip that you don't want to um, go over top. And basically take your little two inch piece or three inch piece that we cut, shove it to where it bottoms out. And then we just need to tack it. So I think that's our height. This part of my tube is just hitting the edge of the square tubing, so it's gonna grind a touch off of there, and I might have to take a touch off of the, the corner of the gate. So 
So we've got just enough room left in the bolt. We'll drill a hole through the bottom and put an R clip through it. That way the gate can't ever fall off um, unless you want it to come off, pull the pin. Uh, just enough slot, you can see in the, in the pins here and enough play to slide the gate back and forth to fit it in between there. Um, we're gonna grind a touch more off of this corner so we can push this in a little bit and weld that solid. And uh, the ramp is done, I love it. All right, so we went online and found these cheap fenders. These were 15 bucks a piece. You can get more expensive ones, you can get plastic, you can get cheaper, whatever is in your budget. Our budget is as little as possible. So um, we've got our old tires on here yet. Uh, we'll, we will be replacing these tires just because they're old and weather cracked and those rims look like crap. But we want to figure out where our fender's gonna sit. We want enough height on there so that when we put, say, like, three or four uh, Cummins in there, and we've got 5,000 pounds in there that it doesn't rub on the fender, but looks aesthetically pleasing too. So that was an afterthought for me now, but you watching the video, you might want to center these. It just looks a little nicer. So um, we really don't have anything to weld to here. So uh, we still have a little bit of steel left over from our skid. So we'll just put a piece in the middle there. Um, I like it nice and tight. We'll measure from the bottom, make sure we're square. We'll weld those in place. Um, we could use nuts and bolts and things like that, but we have a perfectly good welder. So we'll just run a little bead on here and on the, on the bottom here, on the back and on there, and it will be as good as it will ever be until it rots off in our nice salty climate. So here we go. Now I know what you're thinking, the trailer's still looking eh, and that's 100% because you've got crappy old rims on there. Now any, any guy knows that some nice new rims and tires, oh, that's what makes it look good. But before we do that, now's a good time to paint the bottom of it and paint the top of the fender. Um, the stone chips are gonna be the worst on the bottom because you're gonna be hauling your quad out to the lake on those gravel roads in the back country. So we'll splash some paint on the inside and we'll um, bolt the tires on. We're gonna check our wheel bearing play. We're gonna save that for a separate video, just how to adjust your wheel play, just because we're into building the trailer and it's starting to drag on a little bit. Is it dragging on a lot? Maybe we need some more videos of, of well, cool welding shots. Here we go. Gonna put some uh, some truck lights on it because they're very inexpensive and we'll put the link on that definitely we don't want to have our hinges interfere with our um, our lights so I like these off to the side we'll put one on each side and that's good enough if you want to get carried away you can put some lights at the front uh, they, uh, some amber on the front red on the back it dresses it up makes it a little, little fancier um, but that's up to you so we're gonna scribe that. I actually had this laying in the um, out back. This is just off of a, a truck. If you wanna go really inexpensive, you can go to Wreckers. Now these picks, um, you get them at your local dentist. Next time you go for a checkup, just ask them for their old ones. So this is two and a half inch uh, across. So you can use a two and a half inch hole saw or use a drill bit. If you don't have a drill bit, make multiple holes around the corner and then use your grinder to cut across the top and the bottom. Or, okay, to go from MIG to stick, very simple, just unplug this cable on the front, plug in your uh, cable for the stick, hit the button to say I am now stick welding, and turn her up to 10. Is there an 11? Stops at 10. Let's see if 10 is enough to do. Lights, we went with uh, your everyday inexpensive uh, truck lights. These have been around for years and years. You can get them online, but you can probably get them uh, even cheaper at just a truck supply shop. They have a plug at the back 
Uh, very simple. Um, that plugs in. Ready to go. And then it's already labeled tail, ground, and stop. So there's no doubt as to which plug does what. Now you'll have two wires uh, running to your lights. Think of it this way. Brown is your tail, and then you have green and yellow. Green, it's not house wiring. Green is not your ground. Green is right. Yellow is left. And the way I see it is yellow, le, yellow, left, green, right. If you're driving down the road, your green is on your right, the ditch is on your right. Think of it that way. Green wire does your right and your turn. Yellow is your left and your left brake. White is your ground. So let's hook those up, throw those in, and we've got a finished trip. Why do they do that? Why can't one plug just freaking do anything? I'm gonna just cut this off and see if that makes a difference. First ones I grabbed, of course I. See if that works. There we go. <laughs> Fits like a glove. So this is our existing wire. Um, it was damaged back here, but it was still good good up to this point and our new plug is long enough to make it through now there's already a hole in the frame for the wire to go through you want to protect the wire from the sharp edges so you can use uh, an old rubber hose like a small one cut a slit in it and just tuck it away um, i have these uh, rubber grommets that will fit nicely in the hole and will protect the the wire so it's um, if you have that laying in your shop by all means use it if not, some split loom or a small rubber hose will do just the same. Okay, now uh, we need to connect these wires together. There's a few different uh, uh, ways you can do it. You can use these inexpensive uh, butt connectors. These will fill up with water and salt and will um, cause problems very quickly. We'll toss those away. Best way is to use a butt connector like this and a little bit of heat shrink. Um, and the proper crimping tool for that. So if you remember, this white one is the ground. You can drill a hole and just stick a um, quarter inch bolt through it, and that will be a great ground. Now we've got a specific video on wiring a trailer. It is a much larger trailer, but the principles are still the same. Uh, we're also gonna make a specific video on the wheel bearing, just because we understand that this video is getting long. So. Um, Check those out, but for now, we're just gonna button this up quick and get it back on its tires. Now all we need is a quick little bracket to finish off the end and to hold the gate up while there's something in the trailer. All right, you've made yourself a nice little trailer. Not only does it have a nice long ramp to get that lawnmower in, it also folds all the way flat to reduce that wind drag. The way fuel prices are going, you'd be surprised how much extra it costs driving around with a gate in the air all the time. As if that's not enough, you can pull it out, use it as a little workbench for fixing your quad or your outboard or put your drinks on or whatever else you want. Now with the welder, um, really, your imagination is your only limit to what you can build. Uh, if you want to keep going with the trailer, put some lights on the front, put a jack at the back so you can load stuff without having it hooked up to the car. Switching between MIG, stick, TIG, and aluminum spool gun couldn't be easier. All the instructions are on the lid. It's a matter of unplugging the proper connections and plugging in the right ones. So not only does the MIG Pack 140MP do MIG, it also does stick as you saw, TIG, and has a, an attachment for an aluminum spool gun when you get into the aluminum. No, but that's just showing off, telling everybody you can weld aluminum. I've never welded aluminum before, and uh, that's kind of what I ended up with after about only about 20 minutes of practicing. So um, stick around for more aluminum videos because we'll be learning together. And uh, not only does this have the spool gun attachment for um, aluminum, it also has the TIG attachment. Can't TIG aluminum because it doesn't have the heat, but it can TIG stainless, so here we go. We appreciate you guys watching. Uh, we will be giving away a welder exactly like that coming up, so stick around for that. Make sure you're subscribed if you, if you aren't already to keep up for updates like that. And comment down below as to what projects you would have in mind for a little welder like that. Again, thanks for watching. Stay filthy, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. Here we go.